Welcome to a proof of the equation of a tangent plane to a surface. We have already discussed the similarities between the equation of a tangent line to a curve in 2D to the equation of a tangent plane to a surface in 3D. In this video, we want to formally derive the equation of a tangent plane to a surface. Remember, the equation of a plane with a normal vector n with components a comma b comma c and containing the point x1 comma y1 comma z1 can be given by this equation here. We will use this equation to help us derive the equation of a tangent plane to a surface. Now looking at the graph below, the blue surface is given by a function f of x comma y. The yellow plane is tangent to the surface at this point here. Next notice how vector u and vector v are two vectors in the tangent plane, which means if we determine the cross product of these two vectors, this will give us a normal vector to the plane and then we can use the normal vector and the point of tangency to determine the equation of the tangent plane. Notice how in this case, this normal vector was determined by the cross product of vector v and vector u. To better understand how we are going to determine vector u and vector v, which are the two vectors in the tangent plane, let's look at a similar example in two dimensions. In two dimensions, if we have the function f of x, which is differentiable at the point x1 comma y1, then the vector v with an x component of one and a y component of f prime of x1 is tangent to the function f of x. As an example, if we are given the function f of x equals x squared and we're asked to determine a tangent vector to the curve at the point one comma one, we begin with the function f of x equals x squared and then we determine the derivative where f prime of x is equal to two x we know derivative function values give us the slope of a tangent line at a given x value. If we can determine the slope of the tangent line at the point one comma one, we can use that slope to determine the components of a vector that is also a tangent to the curve at the point one comma one. So f prime of one is equal to two times one which equals two. Slope is often more helpful when it's written as a ratio or a fraction. For example, here we can write two as two over one. So two or two over one is the slope of the tangent line at the point one comma one, but to determine a tangent vector, we can use this to determine the components of the tangent vector. For example, if we start at the origin and then use the slope and go up two units and write one unit, that would give us this red vector here, and notice how the x component is one and the y component is two. If we move this vector to the point of tangency, we can see it's also a tangent to the curve. And again, the x component is one, and the y component is equal to the derivative function value. Applying this to three dimensions, we can use the first order partial derivatives to determine the slopes of the tangent lines in the positive x direction and the positive y direction. And then we can use the slopes of the tangent lines in the positive x and positive y direction to help us determine the components of vector u and vector v which are two vectors in the tangent plane. So to set this up, let's first let vector u be equal the vector in the tangent plane that's in the x direction, and therefore the slope of this vector must be equal to the partial derivative of f with respect to x at the point of tangency. And because of this, we can let vector u have an x component of one, a y component of zero, and a z component that's equal to the slope of the tangent line in the x direction, which is the partial of f with respect to x evaluated at x1 comma y1. Another way to interpret this vector would be to start at the point of tangency, take one step in the positive x direction, zero steps in the positive y direction, and then move in the z direction the amount of the partial of f with respect to x. This vector would be on the tangent line that is tangent to the surface and also in the tangent plane. And then we'll let vector v be the vector in the y direction, and therefore we can let the x component be equal to zero, the y component be equal to one, and the z component be equal to the partial f with respect to y evaluated at x1 comma y1. Again, this partial derivative function value gives us a slope of the tangent line in the positive y direction. This line would also be in the tangent plane, and therefore this vector is in the tangent plane. We can interpret this as being at the point of tangency taking zero steps in the positive x direction, one step in the positive y direction, and then moving in the z direction, the value of the partial of f with respect to y 
evaluated at the point of tangency. Now that we have the two vectors that are in the tangent plane to determine the normal vector, we need to determine the cross product. In this case, let's determine V crossed with U. The cross product is equal to the normal vector, which after simplifying, gives us an X component of the partial of F with respect to X, a Y component of the partial of F with respect to Y, and a Z component of negative one. Now that we have the normal vector to the tangent plane, we can now use the point of tangency, which is X1 comma Y1 comma Z1, to determine or derive the equation of the tangent plane. Beginning with this equation of a tangent plane, where the normal vector has components A comma B comma C, we substitute the partial of F with respect to X for A, the partial of F with respect to Y for B, and negative one for C. That gives us the equation of the tangent plane. From here, we can distribute negative one to clear the parentheses, giving us minus Z plus Z one. To solve this equation for Z, we would add Z to both sides, which gives us this equation here. And then finally, Z sub one is the Z coordinate of the point of tangency, which is also equal to the function value F of X one comma Y one. So replacing Z one with F of x1 comma y1, and then changing the order of the equation does give us the equation of the tangent plane to the given surface. I hope you found this helpful.